Well, it's my pleasure, as always, to be in the Lord's house with all of you this morning. And if you have your Bibles, would you turn to Psalm 52? Psalm 52 with me. Given the circumstances uh, this week, uh, I just wanted to uh, go to the Psalms, as I'm sure that many of you also wanted to. And uh, this morning, uh, looking through Psalm 52, uh, what I want us to see is the life and death of the righteous and the wicked. And so, uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, uh, we'll just begin in verse 1 of Psalm 52 and read all the way to the end. The scripture says, why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue deviseth mischief like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living, Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever, and I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. Now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Our Lord, we come before you and we thank you for Jesus Christ who gave his life for us. Our Lord, we thank you for the goodness that you show to us day to day. Our Lord, and uh, causing us to live and uh, labor before you. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to labor before you in the week ahead. We ask that you would send someone our way that we can talk to about Christ. And Lord, we pray that we would uh, be able to uh, uh, help each other and, and be a comfort to each other uh, in our difficulties. Uh, Lord, we pray that if there be any lost in here today, that you would draw them to be saved. Uh, Lord, that the Holy Ghost would work and that Jesus Christ is sufficient to forgive them. Lord, we pray that you be with our missionaries in a like manner to give them the things they need for ministry. And we pray that where we've sinned against you, you'd forgive us. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as I said at the beginning, I want us to read this passage and see how the wicked live and how they die. And then how the righteous live and how they die. I'd like us first to see as the passage first speaks of the wicked and how they live and die. In their life, they live a tragedy. In verse 1 we read, Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth forever. The life of the wicked is a tragedy because they have spurned God's grace towards them. He has been ever merciful to them. He has been long-suffering to them. He has given them all the common graces that he gives to all the world. And yet, they have turned away after their own mischief, and they boasted in it. God has been good to them. Job 25, 2 says, Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. Is there any number of his armies, and upon whom doth not his light arise? Upon who in the world does God not send his light, his goodness in the world? Matthew 5, 42, uh, 5 says, That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain upon the just and on the unjust. The Lord is gracious to all, he gives to all everything that they have. And he has even called them by sending out the gospel to life in Jesus Christ. 
to believe on him and so have forgiveness of their sins. But in their wickedness, in their hatred of him, they turn away from it. It's a tragedy when the wicked die because they die uh, having turned away from God's hope and life. And so we see the ruin of their lives that they cause. When they turn away from God's goodness, they turn away from giving any good to anyone else. In verse 2, thy tongue dis- deviseth mischiefs like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. By their tongue, by their deceits, they uh, destroy men. Their tongue like a sharp razor that cuts men, that destroys them. Uh, they uh, tear down their lives. In verse 3, thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. They love evil, they love the fruits of evil, they love all that is evil more than the good that God gave to them. And they loved to to speak lies, and that's specifically in this passage. They love to speak lies, just as their father, the father of lies, rather than to speak of righteousness, the good things that God has given to us. They destroy men's lives in this way, through slanders and speaking against them. Psalm 50, verse 20, Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Whereas God gave them good things and taught them that they should give good things to others, they slandered. They spoke uh, falsely against the righteous. Even those of their own household, they tried to get, uh, they tried to get, up over them by their lying. Um, They, through flattery also, uh, furthered themselves. Proverbs 27, 5, Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Uh, They uh, flatter. They try to get in and and gain someone's approval by speaking well of them, by... uh, falsely agreeing with them, and all the while, again, trying to turn things to their own benefit by destroying the lives of others. And also through uh, false pact making, uh, by, by lying about what they have destroyed. In Proverbs 1 verse 10, My son, if sinners entice thee, Consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. And the connotation here is that if you strike a pact with them, if you run after them to the promise of success with them, you will be running only to your own destruction. They will turn around and rend you just like uh, an animal might. Uh, They, by their words, by their hatred of God's truth and his mercy towards them, have destroyed the lives of so many. And so when we come to verse 5 and we see about their death, we read that God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. Selah. Their fitting end is that God turns all of the evils they have done upon themselves at the very end. Just as they had deceived men and they uh, had uh, 
tried to get success by it and maybe had succeeded in some uh, earthly respect, in the end, God will turn that to their destruction. Psalm 714 says, Behold, he travaileth in iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it and is fallen into the ditch which he made as we read in Sunday school this morning. His mischief shall return upon his own head and his violent dealings shall come down upon his own pate. Uh, when they deceive and they destroy and they spurn God's graces, God's final act towards them is to remove all his graces from them, to have no more any mercy stored up for them. It says, God shall likewise destroy thee forever. It's not, in, <coughs> it's not a probationary period that they go to, but forever. God will no more have any mercy towards them because they would have none of his and they showed mercy to no one. This we notice sometimes is even partially fulfilled in this life and is only a foretaste of what is to come to the wicked. He that lives by the sword shall die by the sword. He who ruined men with drugs shall often become the addict himself. He who tells a lie to uh, try and uh, feed off of men, he will be caught in the same lie. It's a fitting end for them. And this comes on all the wicked who love not God and who take not his mercy towards them. And so their memory at the end of their life in verse 6 is ridicule. In verse 6, the righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. They uh, will laugh at him. They will, be, uh, they will see his end, that God gave him a fitting end, and they will ridicule him. His memory will not be a good memory. It will be uh, remembered that God dealt with him exactly as his works deserved. And so this is the life and death of the wicked. But now let's look at the life and death of the righteous in verse 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. This is the life of the righteous. It is like a green olive tree in his life. See how he prospers, how he grows in the house of God. In Psalm 1 verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he doth meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. In whatsoever way it be that God has chosen that the righteous will prosper, this man will prosper in it. Whether it be by wealth or wisdom or skill or love, in the house of God he will not fail. God will give him exactly what is do to him. Uh, they will be blessed by God to prosper in what they do. Uh, they will flourish and be like a tree in God's house. Notice also that he cares for the house of God. As the olive tree flourishes and grows in the house of God, it is so he can send forth his fruit in his season to care for God's family. In Proverbs 11, verse 30, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Psalm 37, 21, The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. This is 
what the uh, spiritually is true of the righteous in the house of God. Again, however he flourishes, maybe he's gifted with wisdom and understanding in the scripture. Maybe he's gifted with wealth to care for the people of God and their needs. Maybe he's gifted uh, with a great love for God's people and, and to be comfort towards them or to be skilled and, and tend to the needs of the house of God. Whatever it is, he is given it and he uses it for God's household. This is how the righteous live. Always caring about the things of the Lord. Giving what they have uh, that God has given them in return to the use of his will. And see also now how he trusts in the Lord. In verse 8 at the end it says, I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Even for all of the good that he does, how he's a tree in the house of God, how he flourishes and cares for the house of God, yet his confidence is not in himself. It's in God. That is his confidence. Psalm 73 verse 25, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Namely, this is to trust in Jesus, that his own right, that the, the, the man's own righteousness is not enough, but Christ is sufficient for him. He trusts forever and ever only in his righteousness. And this is his righteousness. This is his justification to trust in the Lord that has promised him. In Romans 4 or 5, to him that worketh not but believeth, on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth, imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they, they whose sins are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. This is, again, his confidence. And this is his reward, to trust in the Lord and to eat of the fruits of his trust in him. And so the end of this man in his death in verse 9 is, I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. In their death, their praise of God still abides their faith in God does not fail. They have trusted in the Lord and God has kept them to the end. Their end will be in God's house to praise his name. Psalm 23, 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in that house they will eternally praise his name. Psalm 145, 1, I extol thee, my God. O King, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Do you think a heart like this will cease to praise God's name after death? Or do you think that the praise will become even more fervent in the presence of their Father in heaven? God will be their sufficiency for all time and past the end of times. Psalm 73, 23 says, Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. The uh, confidence is in the Lord. Uh, he is continually before him. And God has upholded him and received him to glory. This is the end of the righteous who trust in the Lord, who God has made new by his spirit. They will be with him forever after. And just as we read about how the wicked have a remembrance, how they uh, deceived and wrought wickedness, and their remembrance is ridicule. The memory of the righteous 
is that God's people will remember them and thank the Lord for them. In our passage again, we read, I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait upon thy name, for it is good before thy saints. They are remembered not for their own sakes, but for God who gave it, who gave them. Uh, they waited on God's name, and they do wait on God's name, and so the saints of God remember them. The saints of God see it good that they waited on the name of the Lord, that they have been servants in his household and have been called by his name and so their remembrance is not forgotten first thessalonians 4 13 says i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in jesus will god bring with him the uh, the concern here that's addressed in the epistle is that God's people remember them and mourn the loss of their brothers and sisters, but that Jesus Christ is their confidence and Jesus Christ will bring them with him. This is the way that the righteous are remembered is that they are with the Lord and they will come at his return. And so believers, let's remember all the good that God gave to us by our brother, how he blessed us, how he comforted us with him. And let's be still comforted by the one in whom he placed his trust. And let's go from this place and continue the work that God has set us to do and uh, for which God sent us, uh, Brother Marvin, uh, to help us in that task. First Thessalonians 5 9 says, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, as also ye do. And so let us comfort and edify each other, knowing whom we have believed in and knowing whom Marvin believed in. And now this morning, if there's an unbeliever, you've heard what your end will be without Jesus Christ. God has shown you mercy, and until this day you have rejected his mercy to you. I pray that you would not reject it anymore. If you do, you will be eternally contemptible, eternally ridiculed because of your sin. Romans 3.9 says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Without the regenerating power of Christ on you through the Holy Spirit, this is you. To deceive, to have the poisons of asp under your lips. This is all that we've read about in our psalm this morning. And going in that way, you will be brought down and destroyed by God. Therefore, do as the righteous. Turn to Jesus Christ and trust in him for the forgiveness of your sins. Only have confidence in him not in yourself. John 3.17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Trust in Jesus Christ and you will not be condemned. You will be remembered as a saint, but reject him this morning and you will be destroyed. You will suffer eternal torments in hell. So I pray that you would trust him before it's too late. And again, believers, let's go out in the memory of those that have gone before us and who stand before the Lord before us. And uh, let's do the will of our Father uh, that we can uh, 
get to that place uh, as well sooner. And let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, for the faith of him, the righteousness that comes by him. And Lord, we pray that if there are any lost in here that don't know him, uh, Lord, that you would send your spirit on them and uh, bring them to faith in him. And uh, Lord, that they would uh, come and join this fellowship with us. Lord, we pray that uh, you would send us out to the world, uh, help us to be a witness where we find ourselves. Uh, Lord, help us to keep the memory of uh, all of your saints in mind. And uh, Lord, we pray that uh, where we've sinned against you this week, you'd forgive us and that you'd make us fit for your ministry. Uh, Lord, be with our missionaries and be with our leaders. And Lord, keep us safe till Christ's day. And it's in his holy name we pray it all. Amen.